Hi, uh, my name is Mushtaba. Uh, I'm from Iran, uh, from a nominal Muslim background. Um, I was nearly 18 uh, when I came to Christ. And it was uh, uh, through my uh, older brother, who is uh, six years older than me. Uh, he was, uh, at that time, he was uh, really struggling with depression and uh, taking some drugs. Uh, and uh, he was uh, really violent in the house uh, most of the time. And we had lots of fight and conflicts uh, within the house. Uh, and it made my uh, uh, family uh, life really difficult. So between age 12 to 18, um, uh, I was really hurt by the way he was treating me and my family. And also my dad went bankrupt uh, at that time and financially we were in a, such a terrible situation. So it, it was a kind of a chaos in our house uh, and trouble. And I was carrying all these burdens on me and made me really <clears throat> negative and uh, really uh, kind of angry towards life, uh, towards God, towards people and my heart was really full of hatred uh, towards my brother. I, I remember uh, at one point I was like praying that he, when he leaves home, he never come back again. Uh, so my heart was really dark and I started to questioning myself and questioning life and uh, 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 like, what is the meaning of life? There is no point of living. Uh, what is this life? And uh, also, according to the <clears throat> uh, Islam religion, I uh, saw myself as a sinner that I don't uh, deserve uh, be with God because I was, uh, as I became really negative, I chose lots of negative friends and doing negative activities. And, and it made me really, uh, those uh, life is, uh, that life is done really, kind of made me uh, to have lots of bad habits and addictions, which I wasn't happy with. Uh, so I, I was in this situation uh, that my brother met Jesus, uh, had an encounter with Jesus through one of his friends, and he was completely changed. And uh, he was really calm and kind, have a smile on his face, and I couldn't understand what, it, what, what has happened to him. And he was, it was really strange uh, for me. It was just like a miracle. It was like a dream. Uh, and uh, we had such a peace for like a kind of a week. And, uh, and I was really uh, curious that what has happened to him. And one day I saw a book in his hand, which was uh, the Bible. And I became more interested. And um, one day when he was watching some videos about Christianity, I uh, asked him, can I wa watch these videos with you? And uh, there was two pastors talking about Jesus, talking about uh, like the salvation that Jesus has pr uh, provided for us on the cross and uh, about the new birth, new life, and how he has this power to forgive us and give us a new life and freedom. And I, everything they said in the video, I just say is for me, I want it, I, I want this. And uh, thankfully, at the end of the video, the pastor invited to uh, made an invitation for prayer. If you want to accept Jesus, you can pray with me. And I prayed with that pastor. And uh, right after the prayer, I just felt uh, a great peace in my heart. I, I, I just felt that like it was such a strange feeling. It was like um, I, I am like a lost child going back home. Uh, it was really strange, but at the same time, very familiar, the love I was receiving from Jesus. And after <clears throat> that, uh, I mean, in, in the next two weeks after the prayer, I just saw myself a completely different person. I became really thirsty for the Bible. Constantly, I was reading the Bible and, uh, and just had a big desire to uh, meet other Christians and uh, share our faith with uh, uh, other Christians as well. So, uh, and then my sister and my uh, um, dad also, they came to Christ. 
and we really wanted to find other Christians, but uh, it wasn't really easy because me and my brother went to the uh, like the official church in our city, and uh, it, it was closed. And the, the man said uh, the government uh, banned us to uh, um, like let let other people in 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 the church. And at that time, we realized that uh, there is something uh, going on uh, about Christianity. And we found out, yeah, it's not, uh, the Christianity is not like legal or you're not uh, free to practice your Christian faith. Uh, but <clears throat> it's a long story. Uh, uh, we found some Christian in a miraculous way. And uh, we started to meet each other uh, weekly. Uh, and uh, after one year having uh, those meetings, regular meetings, when I was 20, uh, I remember uh, one day I was at home uh, preparing breakfast. It was really early in the morning. There was a knock uh, on the door and I opened the door and there was like 10 officers was standing in front of the uh, door and they said uh, by the order of the court, uh, we have to research your house. And they pushed me in the house and they raid into the house and uh, uh, started to search everything about Christianity. And then uh, they uh, put handcuffs on me and my brother and my sister and my dad and a blindfold. And uh, they took us to, a, like a, to an unknown place. And they kept me there for 22 days in solitary confinement, interrogating me about my uh, Christian faith and all the activities we had, our house, the secret house group we had. And then, then uh, they sent me to court and, uh, and I was released by bail, uh, which was $20,000 uh, at that time. And then um, the court process took like one year. They gave me eight months uh, prison, but it was uh, like a, a suspended sentence. They told me if I continue my activity in the, uh, within the next uh, five years, uh, they will arrest me again and they give me a new and longer uh, prison sentence. Me and my friends uh, couldn't stop uh, see each other because there was a, like a, a fire in our heart, a passion uh, towards Jesus uh, in our heart uh, uh, because Jesus was really, really kind to us. When I, when I think about it, that how Jesus uh, changing these people's lives, that they don't have any solution in life. Uh, it's like uh, seeing him like 2000 uh, years ago, that he was walking in, in the streets of uh, Israel and Jerusalem and finding broken people and healed them and loved them. It's just like now, Jesus in hidden, walking in Iran's uh, streets uh, and find broken people like me and my brother and other people and just save their lives and give them something that they never can gain it uh, with like millions uh, 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 dollars. And, but uh, yeah, uh, so we couldn't really stop uh, seeing each other as other people were joining us, uh, finding, uh, uh, finding us like through our friends or relatives after like uh, a year or something when the numbers were increasing, uh, we couldn't uh, like really uh, gather in public places. So we started to see each other in, in houses, our own houses. And uh, after like three years and a half, when our number uh, from 20 people increased to nearly 150 or 200 people, uh, again, when we were in one of our um, uh, meetings whilst we were worshiping there was a knock at the door and we opened the door and again the intelligence service read into the house and uh, arrested the leaders and I was one of the leaders again the same uh, they put uh, handcuffs on my hands and blindfold and took me to uh, intelligence service J and uh, I was in solitary confinement for over one month and um, uh, and then they uh, transferred me to the public prison of the city, which was a massive uh, prison with 8,000 uh, prisoners in it. 
and um, it was such a horrible and dark place and uh, they kept me there for three years it was like a, a new world uh, with the new rules and and um, I, I didn't know how uh, I, I, I could uh, cope in that situation. It was so much bigger than me. I was uh, really like an ordinary person in my society. I never had any conflict with, uh, 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 with my neighbors, uh, let alone with, with the police and now being in prison. And uh, I, I didn't know how to cope with this uh, situation now. But, uh, Jesus was really uh, bigger than the prison and bigger than my uh, weaknesses and he, he was really faithful to me and gave me strength how to cope with, uh, with that uh, situation. I, I remember one day I was praying in prison and, and one of the days I was feeling really uh, down and uh, in that kind of uh, uncertainty I, I had. Uh, I was really frustrated and uh, like missing my family and being among all these uh, criminals and all the humiliations from from the officers and all the uh, kind of uh, troubles I had at that time, uh, uh, I, uh, which wasn't really easy. Uh, I, I prayed to Jesus like this, that Jesus, uh, this pain and suffering uh, I have today, it's not comparable at all with the pain and suffering I had without you. This pain uh, is leading me to your embrace, which is eternal life. But that pain without you was leading me to absolute darkness. I prefer to be in this pain and not uh, in that pain. Uh, so it was really my, my testimony and I, I was kind of tasted this sweetness of uh, Jesus' salvation and uh, which the bitterness of prison couldn't overcome it. And it not only the testimony of me, uh, it was the testimony of my friends as well, that how we can uh, uh, not remember what Jesus has done for us. And it just made me courageous and made me strong to continue that I know uh, this pain is temporary, but what Jesus has for me is eternal. Although it was really uh, difficult for me and for my uh, family, but uh, God kind of uh, showed me that it was like a mission for me to be in prison. Uh, it, uh, uh, in one of my prayers, God gave me this picture that Jesus was the only person, in, when we read the New Testament, he was the only person who reached the lepers. Uh, lepers who were really isolated and rejected from the society and no one would care about them and wanted to be close to them but Jesus was the only person who became close to them and loved them and hugged them and uh, healed them and uh, God kind of told me that these prisoners are like lepers isolated and rejected from society but still I love them and I want to be with them and save them and so you are my arm, uh, my straight arm in the prison uh, to be there and love them. And there were, there were some uh, prisoners who uh, came to Christ when they heard about Jesus and uh, their life was completely changed. Some of them were sentenced to execution and uh, terrified of death. And uh, every night they couldn't really sleep and thinking about death. And he was, uh, th these people was like sitting in darkness and they didn't have any hope, absolutely hopeless. And uh, they, they thought it's the end of their lives. But uh, when they uh, encountered Jesus and their life changed, they, uh, some of them t gave me this testimony that uh, they, they, uh, they feel they feel they so loved by Jesus uh, that uh, even if they uh, die now, uh, they, they showed that they will be with Jesus. So after uh, three years, I was released from uh, prison, uh, but as uh, it wasn't really safe for me living in Iran uh, because they threatened me a lot that we are watching you. Uh, if you have, uh, e even if you meet one person, 
we will arrest you again. And so for, uh, because of that, I had to leave Iran and I uh, left Iran to Turkey, became refugee there for three years. Uh, which wasn't really easy uh, time there uh, again and the, uh, the, there was another journey uh, there but God also used me there uh, and I, I became a, 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 a one of the leaders in our church and uh, there uh, during the ministry I met my uh, my wife and I got married and then I uh, moved to England.